Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. Okay, so we have started standard methods of solution and the, in the previous video we have seen the method of totaling and here we are going to see the second method that is counting. Now, the counting method is basically used in order to count the number of times an action is performed. Let me write it over here, count number of times an action or any task is being performed or you can also keep a track of number of items left in a stock these are the examples that are in your book but remember that whenever you want to count something you can use this counting method it helps you to count everything. For example, let me give you some daily examples. In our school, in everyday practice, we used to count the number of students who are absent or present in a classroom or the number of students who passed or failed a particular test. So yes, how many students got passed and how many students got failed in a test? And if I talk about doctors or I talk about a clinic or hospital, they keep a track of how many patients got cured from a disease or how many stu uh, patients got vaccinated or not. So, yes. These are some of the examples and if we have a catering business, then how many uh, chairs are needed, how many food is needed or a certain dish like a fruit or something is required for a certain number of people or in other words, in a particular shop, let's suppose grocery shop, how many items are available like cupcakes or whatever fruits vegetables and uh, the milk or dairy items so how many items are in the stock uh, in order to make sure that the thing is available for customers so it is our daily practice that we use to count certain things now this method is very very important we should understand its code so that we can transform it according to our own need. Now I am going to discuss the code that is written in your book and the example of that. Later on, we will see that how we can change it according to our own need. So I'm quickly moving towards that code first. Here we go. So this is, I posted from your book. This code is basically to count the number of students who got passed in a certain exam or in a certain class. So yes, it starts with a variable pass count. A variable pass count is basically used to calculate the number of students who pass a certain exam. It is initiated with a value zero here. Then we have a for loop. A for loop is going to run for, for how many times? It's very, very obvious that it is going to run for all the students in a class we need to check for every student mark how many marks each of the student got and then we will see are these marks above the passing marks or not so it means that this counter is going to start from one till the class size let's suppose i'm assuming that my class size is let's take it small to save our time five students so the counter is going to run from one to five. Now, the next thing is we are going to, for every iteration, I'm going to input a student mark. Every time I'm going, I'm going to input a new or a different mark that is acquired, acquired by a student. So next to it, when I take the, or I input the marks in the system, then I will check that the student mark is greater than 50 or not. This is my passing criteria. If the student mark is greater than 50, 
then it's a past student i'll call him i will call him pass otherwise it's a fail student if its marks is less than 50 or 50 or equal to 50 50 so in this case i will consider him a fail student and in this case i will consider him a pass student okay so what you have to do if this condition is true that the marks are greater than 50 so you will increment the pass count pass count why because the pass count is going to tell us that how many student got pass in a certain exam so we need to increment it for every mark that is greater than 50 in the class and for every iteration we will check it and the counter will increment every time to get a new mark now let's quickly do it for five students okay iteration number 1 in the first iteration the pass count value is 0 and let's suppose the okay the counter value is going to be 1 because this is first iteration and now i input student mark the student mark let's suppose i have input is for the first student in my class he got 72 marks so when i will check for the if condition it is 72 is greater than 50 that's why my this statement is going to be run pass count will increment it means that the pass count value will be now pass count equals to pass count plus 1 it means it is zero earlier then i will add 1 to it so the new value of pass count will become 1 in my first iteration for a student 1 now for the second iteration let's do it for five students second time the counter will increment to 2 and the pass count value is is 1 it will be taken from the previous iteration and then important thing is the input value of a student mark so let's suppose in my class the second student has got 32 marks so if a statement will be false it becomes false since my marks are not greater than 50 it's a false statement that's why then the pass count will not be incremented so the pass count will remain same one because see here pass count pass count will only be incremented if this if a statement is true if it is not true you will not run then code code of then okay so now the third time the counter value will always be incremented after every iteration so it is third iteration the pass count will remain same because i only got one student who got pass so it is one this time student mark i input mark for my third student let's suppose it is 63 since 63 is greater than 50 so my statement if a statement becomes true when if a statement gets true the pass count value will be incremented so it will be pass count equals to pass count plus 1 earlier i had pass count value 1 so 1 will be incremented with 1 so the new pass count value becomes 2 at the end of third iteration now quickly moving towards the fourth iteration here the counter value is incremented to 4 this is all my assumptions the pass count is now taken from the third iteration it's 2 and now we will be talking about the input value student mark for my fourth student so let's suppose my fourth student had got um, 81 marks so the if statement gets true why because 81 
is greater than 50. In this case, again, my pass count value will be incremented. So pass count equals to pass count plus 1. And this time the pass count is 2. So it will be 2 plus 1. Now the new pass count becomes 3 at the end of fourth iteration. Now the fifth iteration, my counter value is incremented to 5. My pass count is taken from the previous iteration that is fourth iteration. It was 3 and now the new value or the value of a student mark for my fifth student is let's suppose 29. When it is less than 50, so the if statement will not be true. It is a false. So when if, st if statement is false, then you won't be incrementing the value of pass count. So pass count at the end of fifth iteration will remain same, 3. So in this way, we have seen that how the pass count is being incremented when the pass mark, student mark is greater than 50 and will not be incremented when the student mark is less than 50. So it's a very simple co code that helps you to calculate the number of students who got passed in a certain class. So your class size can vary. It can be 30 students, 100 students or so many students depends upon your uh, availability. So yes, it can vary, but the same method will be used for no matter how many students are there in your class. So thank you so much. This is all about counting. And yes, yes, yes. One more thing. Here I have mentioned that we can also see that number of items that are left in a stock. We can also manage that by using the counting method so that we can see that if the stock is less, we can reorder. This is also mentioned in your book. Let's quickly see that code and then I will just wind up this video. Okay, so here we go. This is a very few line of code that will help you to calculate the number of items that are available in a stock. And if it is few items available or less than 20, let's suppose 20 is my three showed value. 20 items means if there are only 20 items in my stock, then I have to reorder. So every time when an item is being sold, it will be, the stock will be decremented. Yes, it means that let's suppose a customer buys uh, a gem, a bottle of gem. I had 22 bot bottles available. When a customer comes and it buys one bottle of jam, so the bottle of jam is now decreased. The top stock is decreased to 21. And suddenly another customer came who bought one bottle of jam again. So the 21 is now becomes 20. So in this way, when this item is being sold again and again, so if the item the stock gets less than 20, let's suppose 19. So you have to reorder in order to uh, save yourself from a condition when the item will not be available in your shop. So to make your customers more satisfied and happy with you, you must be keep on checking your stock. That if the item is less than 20, you must reorder quickly so that you will never be out of stock. So it's a very simple line of code here. You are going to check the number in a stock. If it is, let's suppose for a certain item, let's suppose jam, it becomes 19. So 19 is less than 20. So you, for this value, if it gets true, you have to reorder. And if it is false, you have to do nothing because the stock is available. So in this way, we can also use the counting method. So these are some of the daily examples, general examples for counting. We can transform them according to our requirement. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any other questions, you can uh, comment below.
definitely I'm going to help you uh, as much as I can. Stay tuned, stay connected, and do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.